Hello and welcome to another InventRight TV show. I'm one of the co-founders here at InventRight and we have a very special guest on today. Her name is Sar Samira Methra and she's got a story to tell. She's been coding since she was six years old and she's got this really cool board game and it's, is it, is the board game called Coder Bunnies? Yes. Is the name yes. of the board game. Okay. We'll make sure to link down below. So if you, is this for adults or for kids or for everybody? For everybody. For everybody. Okay. So if you guys are intrigued, look down in the description, there'll be a link to where you can get it. So um, you have been coding since you were six. How did that happen? You were telling me an interesting story about your dad playing a trick on you. And tell me yeah. about it. So when I was six years old, my dad played a prank on me and he essentially showed me something on his computer where there was one button and a command next to it, which said, press this if you're beautiful. And he told me to give it a try. But when my mouse pointer touched this, you are beautiful command, it disappeared. And at first I was confused. I was like, you know, how did you do that? Am I not beautiful? Like what's going on here? And my dad told me that he used something called coding to create this little button prank. And that got me really intrigued and interested in learning how to code myself so that I could create similar pranks and games as the ones that my dad played on me. And then I could create these pranks and games and I could play them on my friends and trick them. So that it was actually just my sole mo motivation behind learning how to code at the time when I was six years old, just learning how to create simple pranks and games. But that, you know, motivation turned into a passion. And I began loving the real process behind writing code. And I just, I loved how you had to think everything, tr everything tr through, you know, you really had to have the right mindset for it. And I think, you know, that's just how it all started. And that's how my love for coding started. Well, you've got this board game, so you're obviously an inventor, but don't you think that that coding, I mean, aren't all coders to a certain extent inventors? Because they're always inventing new ways of making things happen. Um, do you do you think of yourself as an inventor? Our channel is all about licensing and inventing and yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I definitely consider myself an inventor. And even before I created my board game, I consider myself an inventor when I was learning how to code. And even just before that, because I think, especially for me, from a very young age, I loved creating new things, you know, whether that was just creating something with paper and, you know, playing around with it to actually creating a real board game that now sells on places like Amazon and Walmart. Um, I've always, you know, loved the idea of creating something of your own. And I've always, you know, been an inventor, even from just the process of writing, writing code. Okay, so call me a little bit confused. So I get the part about you're motivated to prank your friends, probably prank your dad back too. You probably want to get him back, right? Yeah. And, and you got really passionate about coding. But what the heck does a board game have to do with coding. Coding's on a computer. So how did that happen? Yeah, no. So basically what happened was, you know, I started learning how to code myself to create similar pranks for my friends and, you know, my dad. Um, and I think, you know, I just, as I said, I began falling in love with the process of really writing the code. And over time, I started talking with my friends about how much I was enjoying this new coding thing that I was learning. And I was like, you know, hey, have you guys ever, you know, tried coding before? Do you guys know you want to code some projects together? And all of my friends were like, yeah, you know, we don't really like coding. It's just kind of, it's boring and hard and it's kind of just frustrating. I mean, I don't like coding. And to me, that was really surprising. I was like, how can my friends not like something that is so cool and that, that I personally like so much? And so I thought, all right, well, let's see what do my friends like my friends love playing board games we love playing board games together um and i thought well, what if i bring the coding onto a board game and so you know my friends love board games well maybe if i bring the coding onto my board game onto a board game my friends will start liking coding and then we can all code together and have fun so that's where i got this super crazy idea to create a board game that actually teaches coding. And I know, you know, when you think of coding, you definitely don't think of something 
offline. It's definitely right. on the computer. Um, but at, at first, I just wanted to make coding something my friends liked. And I thought the best way to do that was to take something they already liked, which were board games, um, wow. and, wow. and, and, and you know, teach coding through it. You're, you're not only a good coder, but you're a good marketer. You know, a lot of kids, when they realize their friends weren't into it, they'd be like, okay, I'm not into it either. But you decided to basically market to them. <laughs> you figured out how to sell them on coding. I think that's impressive. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think one more thing was just that because I was so young, I was like, what, seven years old, seven, eight years old at the time. I didn't really think of a barrier, like, you know, I didn't think of it as a barrier, like, oh my God, how am I actually going to bring coding onto a board game? I had this sort of open, different mindset, right? That, well, it's something I wanna do. And so I can do it. I think that's one really important thing about the youth and my generation specifically. And that's a lot of the reason why I believe that our voices also deserve to be heard in, in big decisions um, and, and play major roles. I think that was just something different and something you know, separate, but I really just think that being young and having such an open mindset would play a huge role in you know, making such a crazy idea a reality. Well, and I think you're way ahead of the curve. So that was a little while back. Now it's like the cool thing kids coding right it's almost kind of become semi mainstream like but back then it, it it wasn't it wasn't that long ago but it was fair fair amount of time ago and so for you to you're ahead of the curve you're a, you're an innovator you're you're definitely ahead of the curve coding coder bunnies is a lot of fun um how did you come up with the name um, so of course, you know, it was a coding board game. So I thought, all right, well, maybe I should have the name coding or coder or something mm -hmm. in a way in the name. And I think from a very young age, I've had a big fascination with bunnies. I always loved bunnies. And I thought, well, you know, maybe the whole board game can be based around bunnies. I mean, it's something else I love. And if anyways, I'm taking, you know, all the things that we love, board games, something I love, my friends love, maybe if I bring in bunnies, they'll be even more interested because we all love bunnies. Um, and so that's, you know, that's just how the name came to be, Coder Bunnies. You know, I interviewed another inventor, he's, I think he's 15 now, and Sebastian Flores, and he did these um, paper um, product. You can go to octogifts.com, his website, and see it. But he's the same thing. He, he, he wanted to do something he loved to do. And he was wanting to make an impact on other people's lives, too. He wanted Because it brought a smile to people's face when they saw the product, because it's a product they would actually gift to somebody else. And I'm seeing a trend here between him and you. And so you wanted other people to enjoy what you did. And, and, you know, I mean, I think when people do things that they didn't think they could do, it brings a smile to their face too. It makes them happy too. And you no, know, so one of the other things that I was really impressed by is you were looking to, you really believe that there should be more women engineers. And my daughter just turned nine and, and I fully agree. And we were having this conversation about how, I mean, if there's so many men engineers, they're just, we're missing out on something. We're missing on a different perspective. Are women engineers that might, some of them approach things different than a man? Probably. So, I mean, and what other reasons? I think that's an important reason why we need more women engineers. I think the world is missing out on a different perspective in engineering. Um, not necessarily that they'll all come up with a different way of doing it, but women look at things differently than men. And girls look at things differently than boys. You know that, right? <laughs> so what, are, what, are your, what is your motivation there? Is it just that simple? I mean, yeah, I think, you know, one thing I think for me, the whole reason this all started out was, you know, with Coder Bunnies, this board game that I'd created, I began holding workshops at my local library with it, you know, with the same goal, get more kids interested in coding, make coding something fun. But one thing I saw was the lack of girls at my workshop. Mm. Uh, and, you know, this, this sort of like made me feel what, why is this? What's happening? And so I did a little bit of research. I found out even still till today, women are not even represented 50% in the tech field. Um, I think around 20, 27%. I didn't moment. even know it was that high. 
Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, if you dive deeper into fields like artificial intelligence, women are only represented 12% out of all of the people in the workforce. So that is so, so crazy. But we need women in the tech tech field now more than ever. And I think, you know, it's exactly what you said. Women bring a different perspective, their creativity, their compassion, their collaboration. I think with all of the technologies in the making, you know, we can't have just one mindset, just one point of view at the table. We need the voices of women as well. Um, you know, women can be bold and decisive, but at the same time, kind and empathetic. And that's exactly what we need. And this way we can work together to find a solution, even, you know, to the craziest problems, because I truly believe that the best ideas only come to light when all ideas are put together. Mm -hmm. And so we need women in the tech field now. It's, it's not a suggestion. It's something that's needed urgently. And you, you know, by wanting to motivate kids with your board game, you know, a good percentage of those are going to be girls, especially if you're coming at it from your perspective, you're probably trying to make it appealing to girls as well as boys. So you're already working on your goal. I mean, I know you know that, but I'm just, uh, I, I, you, you, you're already working on your goal there of having more women engineers and more coders. So you got, it was, those are your two goals, right? And then just having fun too, right? Yeah. I, us adults, we forget how to have fun, I think. Absolutely, yeah. And well, and the third thing you're probably accomplishing is you're helping adults have fun, you know, which we're not very good at that compared to kids. <laughs> we suck at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. And I think that's one of my biggest goals. Um, coder bunnies. It's something anybody can use. And, you know, my favorites are just, you know, the whole reason I started out. Board games are something that's supposed to be played together with friends and with family. Um, and so same thing with coder bunnies. Um, it's something that's supposed to be played together with your friends and with your family. Um, and that that's exactly what it says. That's good. Oh, it brings families together too. That's cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was a lot of the reason actually why um, I created a board game. I think, you know, what may not have been my original intention, but now that I look back, board games have so many benefits that online games don't have. And just to mention a few, um, kinesthetic learning, right? Studies show when you physically touch cards and physically touch tokens and move things around a board, you're way more likely to remember them. And so what Coder Bunnies does is it teaches coding concepts. So when you go on the computer and do the real coding, everything will be so much more familiar because you learned the concept behind it in Coder Bunnies. Yeah. And remember it because you know when you physically touch things you're way more likely to remember it so that's just one huge benefit right there but so many others like teamwork collaboration you know families get to spend time it's together. a little a little healthy competition too is fun right you're trying to win yeah yeah exactly yeah. cool i it sounds like so where can i get this for my daughter where can i buy your product where can other people buy the uh, coder bunnies board game yeah, so Coder Bunnies is available on Amazon and Walmart.com. Wow. Okay. So down below in the description, everybody, that's where you can get it for families, for kids, for adults. And thank you so much for coming on. Um, I definitely, you know, I'm interviewing more um, kid inventors, teenage inventors, whatever, maybe. Um, I, I want to do follow-up interviews with you guys, the, the folks that I interview, because it's really nice to see that that evolution of your thought process, of your skills, um, and, and all that. So, you know, I'd love to have you back. So don't, if I forget, please reach out to me. Don't let me forget. Okay. Say, Hey, Andrew, maybe time to do another interview. I got new stuff to share, got a new product, whatever it is. Okay. Of course. Yeah. And I actually already have two other board games and I've launched uh, various other initiatives along with it, but it all started out with, you know, one board game like Coder Bunnies. Samir, thank you so much. I want everybody to take care, keep inventing. And if this doesn't motivate you, I don't know what does. Take care. See you guys. Bye. There's a great idea in each of us. But it's truly magical to see it come to life. Sharing your creativity with the world has never been easier. We can help.